Hi guys. I hope uh, all of you are not doing very well. I am really sorry. I've been uh, I've been not really uh, posting in a while or uploading any videos. I've been busy with my colleges. Like my colleges uh, just started in September, and it has been a roller coaster ride since then. So I've come again today to talk to you guys about markets. So let's deep dive into let's have a deep dive into my charts and how they look and uh, what do I think about the market going forward. Yeah. Hi guys, uh, so yeah, we'll start by analyzing what uh, the dollar index is doing. Uh, like uh, if you have seen my previous videos before, you know what is the what uh, influence does uh, dollar index have on the emerging market as well as equity markets. Uh, uh, for example, now we have seen in the past few weeks, the dollar index have rallied and it was in a downtrend first. So... Uh, hmm. I'm really sorry. I'm very tend to forget. Uh, so first, we we saw that uh, it was in a uh, downtrend. Now, uh, following these uh, lower low and lower high structure, now we have again broken above this last term high. And if we make a lower high again, or we have made a lower, uh, sorry, we have made a lower low, we might go up from here. So we might follow this structure up and then down, just to show you again. So. This was a, uh, this was a bearish structure we were following on uh, DXY, and now we have finally broken above these highs, uh, changing the Dow theory. So if you guys don't know about Dow theory, I've talked it uh, a lot about in my previous uh, videos. You can go and check it out. So dollar is looking uh, pretty strong right now. That's what. Uh, that's all I want to say. And dollar being strong is uh, strong directly has a uh, impact on emerging markets like India, and also it has. Uh, so uh, I've I've shown you what the dollar market looks uh, dollar index looks like. It is pretty strong. Now let's uh, dive into the yield curves. So whenever I start to prepare about the markets, I will be watching these two things first. Because this, uh, so here by looking at these two of the indexes, first is the ten year yields in the US. And second is the dollar index. They both tell me uh, what is the what are, what are the how are the uh, global macros look like. For example, are they in favor of the emerging markets or emerging asset class like equity, or are they favor in the are, are they in favor of the asset class like bonds or uh, like risk free assets basically. So now what we can see is on the US ten. Uh, 10 year yield curve, we are currently getting 5% of yields. So, which means that a person in, sitting in the US or a person sitting in the in India investing in US government bonds uh, for 10 years gets a risk-free return of 5 year, 5%. So, this rate of interest is very high as compared to COVID. COVID, these rates were only 1%. This means that when the rates or when the yields or the returns on this uh, uh, 10 year uh, government bonds are really low, the the money uh, the money from the bond market flows into the equity markets currently what is happening is the yields have gone up significantly which means that the money from equity market will go to the bond market it means that now the investors are looking for safety as uh, and also this also means that the uh, so for example 4.9 uh, this high interest rate also signifies that currently we uh, we are in a high interest rate environment which typically means that the borrowing cost has increased for the businesses and uh, thus uh, we go for the risk free assets and we invest in government bonds not equities so after showing you these two indexes now i will show you the top 3 indexes in the us uh, first is dow jones so yeah the charts can tell you simply the Dow Jones, uh, we, we saw good highs in uh, August 23. It looked like that we have broken out of these highs and we are going to make a new high again. However, this high of August or uh, first week or July end was just a lower uh, lower high as compared to this high of uh, Jan 2022. So on a bigger charts, like on a bigger time frame, we made a a lower high this means that the market showed some kind of a weakness and we have a, so we broke out of the structure and now we are uh, again below this this uh, simply tells us that the people who are, who went long here 
uh, near uh, 10 July or something, the week near 10 July uh, on this breakout have now been trapped. Their stop losses, which were simply below this level of accumulation has gotten hit. And now we are on our move towards up downside. If not downside, we are not bullish. That is the most simplest thing that we can identify from this. I don't know where the market is going to fall till this level or this level, but there is a possibility of seeing downside levels as now that we know that the market has rejected from the upside and it is on its move down. The second index I'll be analyzing is NASDAQ composite. One out of three, uh, so second out of three uh, index that is important in the US. So again, uh, we saw that uh, in uh, May, June, uh, 2023, we broke above the last highs of uh, uh, August 2022. Again, this week uh, or the last week, we have come below this. This again simply tells us that we have done a fake breakout on bigger time frames. So in simple words, fake breakout is just uh, that. Uh, so what is fake breakout? Fake breakout is that we broke out of a resistance and then we have dipped below it again, making it a a uh, bull trap. So for example, this area, which I've marked in the red is now a bull trap. Uh, it showed that market was quite strong. We had, we had a move up till these highs of, uh, April, 2022, but this, these acted as a strong resistance and we have again broken below the highs of, uh, August, 2022. If this high, I just want to clear out something. Uh, so it is a fake breakdown, I, a breakout. I think it is clear to you guys, but uh, what I want to really show is, so this was a clearly a downtrend, lower high, uh, lower low. Uh, so lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Then there was a change in structure. For example, this was still a lower high, now a higher low, higher high as compared to the high before. Then a higher low, this signifies that the structure has changed from lower high, lower low to a higher high, higher low. Now, again, uh, after this, we made this higher high, we made this higher low, but as compared to the previous high, this was a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and we have broken below this. So the structure has changed again, unless and until we are back above these highs, one, two, three, we are back above these highs, we will be in a downtrend. And this simply, this red simply shows that, uh, the bulls tried to break above a resistance, but the, it, it, the rally did not sustain. They weren't strong enough to sustain the price. And we have come below it again. That's simple. This is just logical. If you try to understand it and we are again below the August highs again. Uh, so the third most important index in the U S is S and P 500. Again, uh, this signif uh, sign this chart tells us that we tried to again uh, break above these highs of August 2022, like in this chart of NASDAQ composite, but we weren't able to sustain and we are again below this. So looking at the global markets or looking at the mother market of all, which is the US where, uh, so US is the mother market for all the markets around the globe. Hence, I have first analyzed this market. So looking at these markets, we can simply say that there has been a bull trap across all the indexes. The dollar index is strong. The bond market is hot. The bond yields are hot, which simply tells us that money won't flow into asset class like equity. And the charts simply tells us that the market have made fake breakouts across all the indexes and we are still weak. Yeah. So now we have again broken below these highs and, uh, Let's, let's look at Russell, uh, two, uh, 2000. So this is the small cap index in the U S again, this was in a wedge from really a uh, long time. It has broken below this, the first target for this, if anybody trades Russell 2000 in America, uh, I would, uh, I would be positional long on uh, short on this index until these levels. So typically this is the support of this trend line. If it breaks below this, it may continue down further, but, uh, for now you can actually uh, be short on this index till at least till this levels. And we might see uh, lower levels if we break below this, but for now, this may act as a good support. Now, SPX, uh, again, uh, people, uh, a lot of people trade SPY, uh, not SPX, uh, SPY. So a lot of people in the US trade SPY. So again, uh, I'm not a day trader. I don't trade SPY on an intraday, but I can help you guys form a long-term view. So, so uh, SPY for now, 
if you are also a day trader just the advice for you guys uh, i don't know if you guys are scalper but if you guys are at least intraday trader i would tell you or i would advise you guys to uh, not play on the long side but rather what you could uh, so i've identified these levels for you so uh, if the if uh, spy breaks below this level of uh, 420 i would see next support to be at 400 or 403 levels and uh, so this can be a good short positional trade uh, so looking at the daily charts i identified the support so 409 can also be a good support uh, till where this can uh, uh, spy can come down and then it can be 404 uh, levels so uh, yeah so just a quick uh, concept uh, before uh, going into the indian markets that i would like to teach you all is uh, so again uh, yeah i think i've taught this before but it is a very strong concept so for example like i showed you guys uh, showed uh, like i told you guys before how to analyze a, how to analyze the structure of the market again we were in a lower high uh, lower high lower low structure on uh, spy like uh, uh, till uh, 17 October 2022 and then we started uh, changing the structure we made higher high high lows till this point this was again a high higher low then a lower high then a lower low then a higher high and I expect we form a higher low and we continue this structure until it changes so in short what I simply want to tell you guys is so we know the structure is bearish here uh, the market is in a, in a downtrend according to uh, Dow theory. So I won't suggest any one of you guys to play the bounces or go long in the market. But rather what we could simply do is uh, we could use this Fibonacci ratios. This is the new concept I wanted to teach you guys. So in every video, I try to teach you guys some concept. So uh, using this Fibonacci ratios, uh, wherever whenever we go in a downtrend and there is a bounce. So we know the market structure is bearish. So we try to add some short quantities in uh, the key fib numbers. For example, you need to go short on 100 quantities, like 100 lots of futures of SPY. So what I suggest is uh, you wait for a bounce in a down rally and you take staggered entries. For example, you go 20 lot shorts on short on 23% of the retracement, then 20 lots you add on 38% uh, uh, retracement, retracement is when the market is going up so i'm not telling you to go long but i'm telling you to build your position short positions then you go 20 here on 50 then you go 20 again on 60 so we have entered 1 2 3 4 total uh, 80 quantities are done and then again the last 20 if there is a retracement till 78 you again add uh, 20 more lots this can also be done in a shorter time frame for example if you do it in a daily time frame you need to have a real relatively big amount in your bank account to take this trade because on a daily basis your stop losses will be bigger because we are playing a bigger time frame but if you want to do this you can do it in a shorter time frame all i want to teach you is one concept of fib retracement and how to take entries so i told you 23 percent 38 percent 50 percent 61.8 percent 78 percent so these are fib levels which are really important so you took staggered entries here and uh, so for example in this case until the stock has retraced re retraced till 78 percent we are in 100 uh, quantities of future short and what is a stop loss the the most important part it is above this point from where the downtrend started so above the one point do you guys get it so this is the stop loss level if you hit this you get out because structurally if market goes above this, this was a lower high that we spotted in a bigger time frame. This was a lower high that we spotted. So if market goes above this, the structurally, then market change uh, changes its uh, direction. For example, if this is a lower high we identified and this is a higher low, then this is a higher high. If this is breaking, you are simply in a uptrend now if this high goes. That's why this is a perfect stop loss area because we have built a view on a bigger time frame. On weekly charts, we have identified this as a lower high. And then on a daily chart, we know that the structure is bearish. We are taking entries on an retracement and we are playing the market with the trend. So that's how, that's what I want to teach you guys. So you identify the structure of the market firstly in any index, any stock that you're trading, and then you take entries on the retracement. Uh, if you don't want to like take a lot of uh, big position, like hundred lots, and you want to take only three staggered entries, just uh, ignore the shorter retracements, then ignore 20%, start with 38%, 50%, 68%, do it like that. But your stop loss will be 
above the uh, starting point uh, of the trend. Like in this case, it's one. So yeah, uh, that is what I wanted to teach you guys from today. And uh, yeah, your target can be, uh, so I did not cover the target. So simply what your target can be, you can identify this support areas. For example, the next support areas here were this. So you can simply identify this support areas and make it your targets. I won't, uh, yeah, that's just simply uh, the, so you just uh, go, uh, you just uh, drag the charts and here I can see a big support area as this levels. So this can be your target and you can manage the risk accordingly. And the way you have taken staggered entries, it really makes your entries really good because no one really knows where the market will top out, where the market will bottom out. We only, uh, what tra as traders we can do is control our risk. So taking staggered entries is the most important part and using the FIB ratios in taking the staggered entries and playing it through market structure, like keeping it really simple, just using Dow theory to trade can really make your trading simplified or at least you can use this tools or the, what I've taught you in like five, 10 minutes, uh, like in the past 10 minutes, you can really use it to prepare yourself about the markets. So that's how I do. I, I take my, uh, staggered entries on the retracements and I also want you guys to do that. Now, uh, I've, uh, talked about, uh, the markets, uh, like how I see the markets. I have told you what the global markets look like. Now let's go and analyze Nifty and Bank Nifty. Now let's analyze the Indian market. So just to, uh, like, uh, talk from a global markets perspective, if the global market is uh, weak, like I showed you, it's weak. There, there has been bull traps. Now we won't be aggressively going long in a, in the Indian markets, though the Indian markets have been really strong. Like the bank nifties has made a lower high, but nifties of the world and bank nifty of, of the world have made a, a higher highs. So nifty, uh, so proud movement for Indians, uh, is that nifty made an all time high when the bank nifty made a, uh, not when the U S markets made a lower high, nifty made a higher high. So we as a market are relatively very strong, uh, then the global markets, but, uh, we cannot be aggressively bullish on the market just because in the previous video, I've told you guys that all the markets around the globe follow each other. They don't work differently. For example, our market cannot be, uh, being bullish, bullish, bullish every day. And the uh, U S market uh, keeps falling. The, it can happen for two, three days. The divergences can be maximum for a month, two months, but for, for a year or two, it can't happen. It seriously can't. And we divergent, uh, diverging from U S markets. I don't think it's possible because, uh, we, uh, our markets are typically, uh, heavily rely on how the U S market also works. So, uh, yeah, so we won't be, uh, like aggressively going long. So, uh, on Indian markets. So, uh, yeah, I've made this, uh, um, like, uh, what do you say, uh, range in, uh, nifty in, um, daily time frame. I think we'll be bouncing back again in this range and coming down and we might stay uh, sideways for this month. If we tend to break below this, if then our next trade can be till here, this can be a really good support again. But if we break below this channel, we can at least get this target of 1% for the week. I think it's a lot. And again, if we break below this, I have another target on the downside as 19, 206. And then if we again break below, uh, this level again, 19,200, I have another target of this upward, uh, uh, this upward channel. Uh, so we might, uh, on the bigger charts, I want to show you if the, another level is also broken, we might just go and test this 19,137 levels. I will just show it to you again. So this is the, uh, so this is the level I'm talking about the upward uh, sloping trend line. So we might come, uh, till this, if those levels break and we break below the channel on the upside, I don't have any targets as such. I think we can again bounce back till 19,800. And, uh, if this also breaks, you can take, uh, 9,900 as, uh, another target. If this breaks on the upside and then if we again break above, we can see 2,200 levels. So these are my levels for nifty and for bank nifty. So now, uh, nifty as an index, it compromises of like more than four or five sectors in India. So it's not completely bearish, I would say, because some of the sectors in India are doing quite well. Uh, the st story in America is quite different, but we are also weak. I'm not saying that we are bullish. 
but we are comparatively bullish than the American market. So some of our sectors are doing good. Some of them are not, which, which will make Nifty go sideways for a while. So some of the stocks are dragging Nifty up like reality, infrastructure, PSEs, uh, some of the sectors like IT, banking are pulling Nifty down. This will make Nifty stay sideways. So Bank Nifty is not sideways. I think this sector is bearish. It is on a support right now, but overall it's more bearish than Nifty. I'm not saying that you can go and short this sector because it is bearish, but you will simply follow the levels I will give you now, uh, which will tell you if you want to go and short on the index or no. But Nifty as an index is sideways. And bank nifty comparative to nifty is more bearish. Yeah. So bank nifty is again at a very crucial support right here. Uh, if breaks below this, this can be a good support right here, right here. Uh, this can be a, like, uh, 43, 431 levels. And then, uh, I believe, uh, yeah. So these are my downside levels for bank nifty. So 43 to 400. Uh, 450 if you want to take a, a target as round number which are really good so you can take 43 500 uh, this is 42 600 but i would suggest to take a downside target as 43000 so downside numbers in index play a very good role so 43000 can another uh, be another target on the downside 42 600 43 500 yeah so for the downside for the upside 44 uh, 44, uh, 150 before that, keep a close watch on 44,000. So this can be a target on the upside as we are on support. We might have a bounce back from this level till at least this highs. Yeah. 200 points. Simple. Just to show you how simply support and resistance can work. I don't know this trade will go right, but what I will tend to do is if the market is going sideways, sideways again here, I've seen that. Uh, so now here, uh, from just a simply what I, how I see the markets, I want to tell you that bank nifty tried to go below this, uh, support level, but it, no, it did not go. So in a smaller time frame, this is a kind of a fake breakdown. So a bear trap and uh, on a support, this, uh, simply tells me that it, it, uh, it is not going down, which, which gives me a clear stop loss of below this candle. And it gives me a clear, uh, target of this, uh, 44,000. So I can simply, uh, take this trade on the long side and it can be a good trade. So I'm not saying that it will bounce off, but it's up to you how you analyze the market. So this can be one of the trades that I can do. I just, I'll just keep my stop loss below this support, my entry right here tomorrow and my target till 44,000 for the week. It is a good 2.5 hour. If you do option strategies, vertical spreads, you can earn like three, four uh, times the reward. But if it breaks below, I will be agile as a trader. I won't be stubborn. I will be flexible. I will change my view then and there because bank nifty, I will show you the RSI of bank nifty. So on a, on a weekly basis, it is in like sideways trend, but still a lower high or in RSI, it looks weak. It is in the down direction, uh, but on daily time frame, it is like more weak. You can see that it is in 38. So no aggressive longs on bank nifty, just uh, seeing the RSI. Uh, yeah, so bank nifty is weak, but we can take short term upside trades. But like I told you, if, are, if you are new, also, if you are a very professional trader, I wouldn't suggest you to take bounce trades. I just showed that trade before just for you to understand how the price action works and how you can actually plan your trades. So again, uh, you can simply use uh, the fib retracements here and uh, take short entries if you want. Yeah. So that's how you can trade bank nifty as well, but bank nifty I've given you the important levels. So breaking below this, you can see the below three levels breaks above this, the, we can get these levels at the target and this level, the ones I've marked. So keep it as simple as that. Yeah. So now, uh, again, uh, uh, so just one concept again, yet again, that I want to teach you guys is, uh, how how to identify which sector to go short on, which to go long on. So, uh, yeah. So currently I just wanted to share this thought. So you guys can use these type of thoughts to identify which sectors to go short. So for example, in the last year, the fed has been increasing rates drastically, just coming into the market, raise hike, raise the interest rate by 50 basis points, 25 basis point. And we have gone up to 5%, I think more than that. So the cost of borrowing is a lot. So the question which comes here is which is the sector most affected by this 
So a simple fifth standard student or maybe a 10th standard student can come to me and say, uh, Vedant Bhaiya, the or uh, Vedant brother, the most affected sector is the banks because the borrowing cost increases, which means that now the money for businessmen like me is expensive. So going to the bank does not really make sense for me currently in this environment as I will have to pay a lot of more interest than I will pay in a low interest rate requirement uh, environment like COVID. So simply I will be more uh, cautious when taking loans. I will invest in less risky assets. I will borrow less. Simply the thing is I will borrow less. So borrowing less will, uh, so uh, the bank's function, uh, like business will go down and hence the sectors like bank will be affected the most. Now what really is happening around the world is banks are being affected. In India, they are not affected as they they are in US because there is a very higher interest rate environment in US than India. But India is also following it because we can't completely detach from what is US doing and what the global economy is doing. So I just want to show you two of the stocks. So one is SBI. So yeah, this you can trade this. This aligns with uh, our global view that the markets are weak. The stock is weak. The sector is weak. So we can short this stock if you want, if it is sitting in your risk environment, risk management plan. So yeah, I have identified this stock. I believe SBI has broken above this uh, up slanting trend line. It is also in a uh, down downward structure. For example, we were in a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low structure. And then we formed a uh, lower high and we have broken below this. Uh, upward sloping trend line. So I have identified these targets on downside for me to trade SBI and that's how it works. So now if the banks in the India are weak, uh, the banks in the US will also be weak. So just let me give you stop loss for this. So stop loss above this breakdown candle of Friday, target one, target two. If breaks below this, then again, targets can be Mm. targets can be this what I'm doing is how I am identifying targets is I'm just trying to see the accumulation zones so accumulation zone is here the, the breakout happened so generally what we tend to uh, as traders what we tend to think is the way the market moved up the way it will also come down if it breaks below this level so why this level is because there is no support here the market has just rallied furiously here in daily time frame. So I believe if this support goes, it will just come here till this level of 544. So these are my uh, levels for SBI and a bigger level can be this, but it might take some time for 507 to come if the uh, high interest rate environment continues. But for short term traders or swing traders, these can be good targets for you all. And I've also given you the sub stop loss of Friday's high. I don't know if this trade will work or not. You have to follow your own trading plan, your own risk management rule. I'm just here to uh, share with you guys how I think about the market and how to actually select a stock. So yeah, now for the uh, for our viewers of uh, the US, uh, I have taken, uh, so just to show you how the global markets work in, uh, work in congestion to each other. I've also, I've showed you firstly the, uh, how the global markets worked. Like we analyze how the US markets are uh, and how they are performing. Now we are seeing the banking sector. So for example, the banking sector in the US is bearish. The stocks there will be bearish. We can choose these stocks to uh, as a short option or we can put it in our watch list to check if there are some good short opportunities. So accordingly, I've showed you an example of SBI in Indian market. Now I will show you Bank of America in the US market. Yeah. So as you can see, what structure, I think now from, uh, as you get experience and all from a naked eye, as I have a look at the charts, I can see it is clearly in a downtrend. It is, the structure is bearish. So again, I have identified some levels for uh, uh, Bank, uh, Bank of America. If you tend to trade US markets, you can uh, have a short position on this stock. Uh, I've seen, uh, so these are the levels, 25.77. 26.55 and if then again broken below it the level is 24.39 so pretty good levels on the upside uh, the stop loss can be above this level i know our entry is not that good if we only take this as a target but we can go to shorter time frames uh, identify accumulation zones 
So for example, if you are just a short term trader trading till here, you can simply uh, uh, put your stop losses above this accumulation zone and this support can be a target. So yeah, simply one is to two hour trade. So that is how I look at the markets. Uh, I hope I was able to teach you guys something in today's uh, video and uh, uh, just like, share and subscribe and uh, yeah, uh, enjoy, uh, trade safe, be well, keep uh, everyone around you uh, happy as, as much as you can. Goodbye. See you all. Thank mm -hmm. you.